I'm gon' rock, we gon' rock, who gon' slide, we gon' slide, they my guys, they my slimes. Flip up and we ride out. I'm gon' rock, we gon' rock, who gon' slide, we gon' slide, they my guys, they my slimes. All out when we ride out. The last topic we're gonna discuss on Boxing Bros is Jamar Chalo arrested for a felony. So reports came out that Jamal Charlo was arrested and his mugshot was going around. And that's never a good thing. But uh, here's an article from ESPN explaining. Uh, and this article is written on August 25th, 2021. It says Jamal Charlo arrested on felony robbery charges for alleged dispute over bar tab. And in the state's WBC middleweight champion, Jamal Chawla, was arrested on Wednesday on felony robbery charges following an alleged dispute with a, rate, with, with a waitress over a bar tab. According to Texas court reports, Chawla was booked Wednesday on three counts of second degree robbery stemming from an incident in July. Chawla posted bond for all three charges and was released. According to the records, Chawla and others were at a bar in San Antonio the night before Charlo's brother, Jamel, fought Brian Castagnano for the undisputed junior middleweight title. <clears throat> Excuse me. According to the police affidavit, Charlo did not pay a large bar bill after his credit card was declined three times. Bar employees told police that Charlo accused the waitress of losing his credit card and demanding she pay the bill instead. The Alpha David states that surveillance videos show Charlo going through two of the waitress's bill collection binders, which contain his identification and another customer's cash payment. When the binders were returned, police say they were empty. So this is the key right there. It's saying that uh, the binder contained another customer's cash payment. When the binders were returned, police say they were empty. So there goes like your loss and robbery, whatever. On Thursday, Charlo's attorney, Kent Schaefer, challenged the police version of events, telling ESPN that the boxer's payment was initially declined because the bank detected a potential fraud charge. After the payment was authorized, the waitress informed him that they had lost his debit card. <clears throat> Schaefer said that the bar staff had agreed to settle the tab of around $2,300 the next day but then the police were involved. Mm. He wasn't trying to walk or he wasn't trying to walk the tab, Schaefer said. It's very, very clear he was trying to pay. While the surveillance video had no audio, the affidavit states that Charlo yelled that he would F you all up. <laughs> F you all's ish up. So I'll F you ish up, basically is what he said. The Texas Pinal pulled uh, states that robbery charge is escalated to a second degree felony if it involves threats. <laughs> I'm sorry. If it involves threats or places another in fear of imminent bodily injury. So now they're saying that the reason why this is a felony is because he said, I'll F you all's up. <laughs> okay, so I'm just uh, throwing that out there. Uh, the crime is punishable between two to 20 years in a fine of up to $10,000. Schaefer said that if prosecutors proceed with the case, Charlo will never plead guilty. Uh, he did not rob anyone, Schaefer said. He didn't steal anything from anybody. He never put his hands on one person. Charlo, um, 30 and old, 22 wins by knockout. I'm assuming that means age uh, 31, uh, is ESPN's top ranked middleweight. He's coming off a successful title defense over Juan Montel in June. So uh, that's what the article had to say. So key points from the article, <clears throat> the robbery is coming from the fact that they're saying that he went into the bonder and took another person's payment for the cash. What makes it a felony is that they, if you do that while placing someone in imminent fear and they're saying he's saying I'll F you all's ish up is what made everyone play <laughs> fear. And so that's how this became a felony robbery. All right. So I'm turning it over to you, Kaspira G. What's your thoughts on this? Man, this is tough, man, because I actually believe Charlo on this one. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's happened to me actually before where, you know, you use your card and it's saying decline. You're like, yo, what are you talking about decline? Like, there's no way my card's declined. But when the bank deems that, yo, uh, this is an unusual uh, transaction or whatever, they'll flag it. So then it won't work. 
And then you looking foolish, like people thinking like, damn, you ain't got no bread, bro. You know what I mean? But <laughs> like our citizens now, what citizens does, they actually would text me like, hey, this seems like an unusual, you know, uh, purchase. Uh, if if this is uh, like, you know, respond yes or whatever, like why or something mm-hmm. like that. So you notify the bank like, yo, I did not agree to this uh, this charge or whatever. Like somebody stole my card or something. But so I believe him on that note. But what's odd is if in fact he did lose his card, right? And he's like, oh, hell no, you ain't going to take my card because, again, he's a boxer. So he's thinking in his mind like, yo, somebody's going to stunt on my card. Nah, I need to find it. So. He's probably going through their stuff, but then where it gets a little funny is he took the the cash though. So now I'm like, oh, why'd you take the cash, bro? You know what I'm saying? You should never have taken the cash. Because then now, how do you justify that? You know, um, <clears throat> I, from what what you just read, I don't remember the lawyer saying that he did not take the cash. It sounded like he did take the cash. So then now it's like, so you were trying to rob the place, you know? Um, and the fact he said that he didn't steal anything from anybody, so I'm assuming that's oh, him oh, saying oh. that he didn't take the cash. Oh, okay. All right. So maybe I heard, uh, but like, because I'm curious to know did, if did he actually take the two thousand plus dollars out of the uh, register or whatever they they're talking about, right? Nah, there's no way, nah, bro. You just it's, like the, the it said like the bond, you know, like where they take your card and they put the. Oh, you're talking about that? Yeah, they say he took that. Uh-huh. And like he took cash out of that, so there's no way it could have been like I've never seen someone pay yeah. cash like twenty three hundred dollars in cash. Yeah, because yeah, the story sounds kind of too funny and strange for me. So I'm thinking the dude ran up on the register. You know what I mean? But all right, so if it's just the the, the little binder thing, man. Honestly, I don't I don't see him doing any jail time, man. This sounds like they're just gonna let him go. It sounds like, especially when you're saying that the, the restaurant agreed to charge him the following day. So I'm like, then who called the police then? You know, like that's that's why it seems like there's a lot of holes in the story. But I kind of feel like even with the holes, this could be easily ironed out in court. Like, hey, somebody stole my card. I was just trying to find my card. I ain't trust y'all employees. You know, um, I wasn't trying to threaten anybody. I just wanted to make sure no one stole my money. So that's why I made a threat. I apologize. It's that third, and the court's gonna let him go. Well, I hope the court's gonna let him go. That's what I hope, because it doesn't seem like he was intentionally trying to rob the place. Like yo, stick him up, you know. So, Charlo, man, you just got, you know, you gotta do better, man. But I can give you a pass on this situation. Dollar bill. Uh, man, I, I just hope everything gets straightened out. I just hope everything gets straightened out. And um, Jamal, I don't know how you handled it at the time. I'm, I'm guessing, I don't know, man. You swearing and stuff wasn't the best way of handling it because you know these these people look for anything. They look for anything. You got to be aware of who you are because they will try to take you down. So just just remember that. That's all I have to say about that. All right, Ned the TBE, Portugal Flash. Oh, man. <laughs> Listen, this all just sounds like a, a crazy night, man. And I get it. Yeah, when his car declined three times, you kind of it kind of kind of felt like a humiliating moment. And you know, they said the bill, the tab was twenty three hundred dollars at a bar. At a bar, I don't know who's paying twenty three hundred dollars at a bar. You know, in in these times, I don't know, in, in a pandemic where you can only fit up to six people in your booth at that. So, yo, dog, a couple of aces of spade. Mm, couple <laughs> of, at a bar, though. This ain't no nightclub. This is a bar. Oh, oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, so I'm like, how many steaks did y'all, y'all order the whole restaurant? Like, come on now. And like, they must have known who you were. So, yo, bro, I, those tabs are normal. Mm-hmm. Especially with like an entourage, like 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 theirs on a fight night. And you gotta like, think about it, like night you, weekend. And you gotta think about it, bottles, right? Even a little bottle, like a bottle's like four hundred dollars, yo. Mm-hmm. Like a bottle of Hennessy oh. that you would normally pay the like bottle. three seven four yeah. 30, right. 30, 30, 35 dollars for. Yeah. In the club, it's like four hundred dollars. Yeah, true. You know I saying? agree. Four or five. So a- and you got a, and you got an entourage with you. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That's 
That's only, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's eight Yo, bottles. Plus, Ned, I think mm-hmm. it's like a typical bar. This could be like a lounge. Yeah, yeah it could be a lounge. Mm-hmm. They're just using bar to like simplify it, to make it look. Yeah, so two G, that's, that's, that's kind of less yes, yeah. relatively light, especially with yeah. a big entourage. You know True. what I'm saying? That's kind of light. True. But I'm just saying, I, 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 this is this is this is some they they do be caring that they are having like large amounts of money on them at, at when they're high profile celebrities athletes whatever they do be carrying large amounts of money on them at that. That's not true. Man. That's actually not true. Bro. Like if you were smart, why would you carry a lot large amounts of cash so you get robbed? Yeah, I, hey man, everybody got that little satchel, that little Gucci satchel, or whatever they rock now. Not really, bro. That's not uh, true. Maybe maybe it's not true, but I'm just saying. Bro, so if they come in with an entourage, they gotta at least have some cash on them too, you know. Yo, you not know? Yeah, I was gonna make it rain the ball. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe the bar is like, uh, uh, you know, the Swisher House. The Swisher House still even open, man. But you know, but who knows? I don't know. Like it just sounds like it got out of hand for a bill that they could have handled easily. Uh, I know, Charlie. I know you got more than one credit card, and um, how do you know that though? That's what I'm saying. What how do you even know that he has a credit card? They said it in this, the thing they lost his credit card and it got the it, it could have been credit, could have been debit. But my, my uh, point is, how do you know how much you know? I don't know how much money you got. I ain't trying to call you broke, Charlo. I'm just saying, bro. It seemed like you, 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 you the Charlo I like, and it just seems like things that got out of control. And you know, <laughs> things okay. got out of control. And <laughs> it was the heat of the moment. Maybe you were under the influence, maybe you weren't, and you know you handle it rationally. And this is just all the other stuff they added to is extra. And yo, you know, I'm about, I'm about that. I'm sorry. Yo, listening to you, you was like, yo, what kind of boy charges this amount of money? Plus, no, I'm not he saying got bag, he got a bag full of ones, he can make it rain in the bar, and I know he got mad credit cards. How you know any of that? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey man. Hey man, uh, hey, man. Hey, I, I, you know I was wrong for me too. It huh. was wrong for me. I mean, it's not now part of arguments. Yeah. So, hey, I mean, I didn't mean to count your pockets, Charlo. You know, I don't know what you got out here, yo. If it, if it's, if it's, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. simple bank card. If it, if it's, if it's, I don't know, but I, it, it just got out of hand that night. Hopefully, you can handle it in the in the court of law, and you. you it never let it happen like this again. And come with more. Come with more. I'll just tell you. Come with an extra credit card. Or get, get file for some credit cards and come with some cash as well. Yo, just make sure you cover. That those wouldn't be the lessons that I hope Charlo takes away from this. Um, I hope the Charlo brothers take a lesson uh, from this, because like G said, I believe it's very plausible that he paid with his card and it was declined because of an unusual purchase. Now you have to understand purchases that exceed a certain amount of money are going to be flat, Mm -hmm. especially when it's an unusual charge. So for example, as G pointed out, I've received that notification where it's like, uh, this is a large purchase. Are you the one making this purchase? Or I've seen like, there've been times when my card was declined because the purchase I was making was large and unusual. And then I'm like, what, how the hell can my car be declined? Like, this is a joke, right? Like, and in your mind, you start to think like, is something happening to me? Like did some, whatever. And then you check your email and it's like, oh, like potential flaw, potential fraud. But my G was pointing out the way that some people do it is they just automatically decline it. But you have institutions moving towards a way where um, you can just approve it by pressing a button. But maybe they try to do that with Charlo and he just didn't do it because they send you like these two step verification process notifications and you actually have to like fill that out. If you never filled that out and they don't know your phone and they don't know your email and all that, when that purchase went through, they had to decline it because there was no way for you to verify it. But if you fill in your information with like your phone number, your email, whatever, they send you that text message and they send you that email. The text will say, did you do, did you make this purchase at this place at such and such time? You can text yes. What they really want is just to confirm that you did that so they can release the funds. Because if they release the funds and it wasn't a legitimate transaction, then the, then the financial institution is on the hook for the money. And that's what they don't want. They don't want to have to pay you back for a fraudulent charge. 
So that's why they want you to confirm the charge. So one, um, J Jamal, if you haven't done that, make sure you've verified or set up your um, authentication process and your verification process. So the next time you're out and you get a $2,000 tab and you use your card, you don't get declined. You get that message. Is this you? And you just text yes. Or you go on your email and you press that button that says yes. And then they have the verification. So that's one. Two, I've watched the Charlos, uh, well, mainly Jamel, but sometimes Jamal, getting these heated arguments and, and things of that nature with people. I, I remember seeing Jamel in particular at like the Louis store or something going off on one of the workers. And we had a segment where we said that wasn't right and he shouldn't do that. It's for moments like this, bro. It's for moments like this. You are the customer. You have the money. You have the funds. It just didn't get approved. And you know this, right? You know this. You are a boxer. You have an entourage with you. And sadly, no one in your entourage could kick in the money. You were the one who had to pay for everyone. So one also, like, if you're going to have an entourage of people, and go ahead. Yo, when you think about what the story said, him taking the 2000 something dollars, that was probably his table that all pitched in to pay for the bill. And then after he talked to the owner or whatever, and they were like, yo, we'll just take the money out your car tomorrow. He probably just took the money back. And it was like, all right, cool. And then left with the cash that his whole table put together. You get what I'm saying? So, because I was like, yo, like, Two thousand dollars in there, and I'm like, it made sense if the bill was two thousand something. The table probably pitched in and paid for it. Then he said, "Hey," and they were like, "All right, we'll just charge a car tomorrow." He said, "I right, bet," and he took the money back. So I just wanted to throw that out there. It's possible. Oh, uh, again, there's a lot, there's a lot of speculation. So if everyone at the table threw in, cool. And if if, if it went down the way G said it that it might have went down, then that's fine. But if no one could pitch in. Like, all right, guys, my card, I'm having issues with my card, whatever. So you just got to pay for what you and, – and, and no one could do it, then then that's an issue uh, with me. Like your entourage. So one of your entourage could have, did, could have done something better. But for me, the other issue with the entourage is this. You know, G, you've been around me. There's no way I'm letting any one of my dudes act a fool like that in front of me. Thanks. This is no way. I'm like, yo, chill. I got this. And I would have been like, excuse me, can I speak with the manager? The manager would have came out. I, You have all the evidence that this dude can pay the bill. I don't know. Look, this is Jamal Chalo, uh, WBC uh, middleweight champion of the world. Here he is. Everything. Now, his card was declined. Um, and I'm sure they didn't know why at the time. So they just keep being like, yo, his card's declined, his card's declined. We don't know why his card was declined. But I'm sure a manager has seen this before, I would hope. Right? The waitress may not know whatever the waitress is doing, but the manager, I'm sure, is like, oh, it probably was the client because whatever. Cool. Let me see. You ever, you ever speak to someone on the phone? Like, they, you call, like, your T-Mobile or you call your cable service provider and they send you to someone and you talk to that person. That person is reading from a script. They don't really know. Then you got to ask to speak to, like, the supervisor. Yeah, speak yeah, to someone... Right who knows what they're, what they're talking about because they deal with it more. So, Charlo, they're so used to exploding and flipping out when things don't go their way. I'm a boss. I'm this. I'm that. You can't react that way. No, all y'all loud. Y'all don't give yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going. And maybe he didn't even say that. But he's being so aggressive and he's so passionate and they just see him and think, he threatened us. <laughs> like, you know? Um, or maybe he said it, but the point is, why do you even need to say that? All you needed to do was speak to the manager. You could have gave him your contact information. You could have showed him who you are. You could have gave him people. Hell, man, you could have called Al Heyman or someone and be like, yo, I'm having an issue right here. I'm sure Al would have been like, yo, give me that phone. Take my card number. Bang, 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 bang. Cool. I'm going to take it out your next fight first. My G, like you ain't had to go that route. But see, that's what happens when you're used to being a hothead and things don't go your way. You forget all resources. You forget all logic. You forget all the things you got going for you. Hell, I wish that I was uh, Jamel in that moment. Oh, man, listen, 
It would have been nothing. It would have been nothing. It would have been a breeze the way I would have handled that. I would have handled that that way now. Same bill, same money, everything. I'd have been, listen, you get your money, take down my information, take this, take that. Here's, I'd have been like, even been like, look, you can hold on to like my license, whatever, but it wouldn't even have gone that far. The point is you your reaction to a bad situation escalated to you being arrested and charged with a felony. That's why the way you behave in these in these smaller, less serious moments matter. Because if you were more respectful in those smaller moments, if you were more respectful, you wouldn't have put yourself in a position like this when your card got the crime. And, and, and while people were acting like Charles broke, stop the cap. The dude had a fight in June. And he just got paid. The dude has money. It's a real thing where the institutions decline your card. I'm sure it's embarrassing. I, there's nothing more embarrassing than knowing you have enough money to buy every object in the store. But when you go there for a Snickers bar or something, it gets declined. Like, uh, so, so I get that. But you, this is why you have to practice being a good person. This is why conflict resolution is, is key. This is why you can't just go around flipping on everyone. Because you flipped on that waitress. And, 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 and regardless of whether or not I think you went right or wrong, you flipped on that waitress. You made her feel a certain way. So now they want to inconvenience you. Whereas all you had to do was just be a, a gentleman, be um. Conflict resolution, be resolution resolution oriented. Think about the ways you could handle this situation without escalating. I Oh, I think she was trying to steal my card. So you grabbed a binder and you do that. You think she was trying to steal your card. Can I speak to the manager, please? Listen, I gave her my card three times. It was declined. This, that, whatever. I think it's unprofessional because X, Y, Z. Is, is there a way I can make a formal complaint? Who deals with her? I want to make sure someone's aware of what she did because I don't want it happening to anyone else. And yes, I'm a professional boxer and I think she may have been trying to steal my card and go on a shopping spree. That's it. Now she's on a hot seat instead of you. Anyways, man, hopefully a lesson is learned. But this is why when y'all call like us haters, when we were discussing like other things, it's really life lessons because, you know, some of us learn them different ways, other ways or whatever. But I really wish the Charlo had the resolve, the composure and the know how to actually handle the situation the right way. Totally. Please let us know how you feel in the comment section. Please like and subscribe and check us out on Instagram and Twitter. And please check out our podcast or all major streaming services. I'm the commissioner, the Trill Dollar Bill. That's the TBE. That's International G. And that's my brother, Caden. And you know who we are. We appreciate you for rocking with us. We're the Boxing Bill. <laughs> You're welcome. You're all welcome.